five years, 800,000 undocumented young people have been able to live in the USA without fear of deportation, thanks to DACA. President Obama started it in 2012 and helps young people that came to the, to the USA illegally to have a renewable visa. This helped them to work illegally in the USA and save them from deportation. Who qualifies for DACA? Kids that have been in the United States since 2007 and before turning 16 years old. People under the age of 31 before June 15, 2012. They have to attend a school, have a high school diploma, or they have to be military veterans, and they must have a clean criminal record. DACA does not provide legal permanent residency or citizenship. However, it does provide access to driver license, credit cards, and bank accounts. In a few hours, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is expected to announce the end of a program protecting nearly 800,000 immigrants brought to the United States legally as children. CBS News confirms that President Trump plans to let the program known as DACA end. Activists outside the White House Monday night urged President Trump to uphold legal protections for children whose parents illegally entered the country. Liu Huang came to America at age 11. These are children who have grown up in this country and called this home. Yeah. I mean, I've been hearing about DACA for so many years. Some people call it dreamers. It's not dreamers. Don't fall into that trap. And I said the other night, you know, we have dreamers, too. We have dreamers in this country, too. What we're asking for and what the American people are pleading for is sanity and common sense in our immigration system. Well, we're, we're working in advocating along with other providers, uh, partner cities around the country, uh, you know, as we did on the Sanctuary City, and also providing, referring uh, those who may be impacted to services. Uh, but I want those who are under TPS or, or DACA to know that, you know, we're going to fight for them. We will not abandon them. Uh, they're our neighbors, they're our friends, they're our family, they're our kids go to school together. This is their country as much as it is mine and their community. They will not be forsaken. And we will put up every level of advocacy or legal battle we need to to fight for them to stay. And my name is Stephanie Cuevas. I'm currently a doctoral um, student. I'm about to graduate from the Harvard Graduate School of Education with my PhD in education. There are questions of like access to resources for undocumented um, students brought me to graduate school. Like DACA significantly changed the life of not only undocumented young people, but their families. So like now you had somebody in their family that can drive, that can apply to work, that it wasn't exploitive, that you had access to minimum wage. College students were able to go back to their countries of origin and visit their families for the first time. So it did have huge positive implications, but it's so temporary. We students were worried about like, oh, what's the worst case scenario? They take it away and now the name has, now the government has the list of your names. And at that point, I remember I was one of those college advisors encouraging my students to apply. We're like, that's not gonna happen, right? But now with the election of 2016 and the, the administration saying that they were gonna take it away, like we are in worst case scenario. TPS stands for Temporary Protection Status. Countries with TPS are El Salvador, Haiti, Honduras, Nicaragua, Syria, Somalia, Nepal, Sudan, Yemen, and South Sudan. TPS does not provide legal permanent residency or other immigrant status. However, it does provide people to work and live in the United States for a limited time and gave temporary protection from deportation. Many lives have been saved thanks to TPS. The political right now, so TPS is pretty much one of the buckets that folks qualify as like for a civil war. 
in Central America, for example, a lot of those civil wars were funded by the United States. So the United States made a lot of the mess that people were running away from. Um, so now, like, giving them protection status here is the least that they can do. And this breaking news from the Department of Homeland Security, 200,000 Salvadorians, many who have lived in the U.S. since 2001, are being told that they have to leave the country by September 2019 or be deported. Well, the Trump administration announced Friday that it is ending temporary protections for immigrants from Honduras. The administration has previously terminated protections for immigrants from Sudan, Nicaragua, Nepal, Haiti, and El Salvador. We talk about it like, oh, what does it mean for the policy? Where is the policy going? But we never see how it trickles down and impacts the day-to-day -day lives of these young people. And now it feels like every time my phone rings, like DACA, it's either found constitutional or like they're trying to sue again or like a district in California found it that it was constitutional. So now we have to keep doing renewals and it often feels like it's not good for mental health. And I think that the best thing that we can do is like keep up with what's going on, even though it's very exhausting. And I think a lot of it has to do with also access to information. What is DACA? Yes. Actually, I never heard of that word. <laughs> I don't know. But I know it's for um, children who their parents brought them to America um, and they don't have like a legal status here at the moment. It's an act that's supposed to allow children of immigrants to remain in the country. Gas, perhaps? I don't know. I don't know. I think so. I think it's an important program. Um, you know, children don't make these decisions um, for themselves. Their parents do. Um, and so I don't think it's right to punish the children for, for the actions of their, ch their parents. Absolutely. They deserve a chance just like everybody else. I'm not so sure. Oh. Um, I'm not very informed. No. There exists such kind of persons that come here illegally but it does not mean that they have to be like sent back to their country like without any reason. I think that we would potentially be leaving a lot of people kind of stranded or confused because they are tied here but they are now I guess not allowed those um, are the same not rights, but I don't know. I don't know what you would say. People here are on refugee status. I think the only reason that someone should be returned to their country is if their their petition for like asylum or um, refugee status is denied. Um, that that's found to not actually be a refugee. That's to me is the only time that someone should be returned to their country. I mean they might get sent back with their parents. It, it's actually not clear because the message from Washington is different pretty much every single day now. So it's pretty hard to tell what will actually happen as opposed to what they want to happen and what should happen. Immigrants are what makes this country productive. And I think it's, and it's also like, I also don't like just thinking about immigrants as work or labor. I think we all, that's another narrative we hear like, oh, without immigrants, like, you know, we wouldn't have clean bathrooms or who would take care of the children and things like that. But like immigrants are worth more than just their labor. And I think that we, again, without without cultures and people coming together, they wouldn't it wouldn't be as successful. And I think that the, the U.S., again, prides itself as being a country of immigrants and the American dream and how that's bought, but it's like the American dream for who? At the expense of who? But if people just talk to each other, um, that's one way to start beginning to change and understanding where we all come from. And it's always just been very interesting to see how groups of people who don't know each other eventually start talking and they discover they have a lot in common. Um, I think that's just one way to speak, start beginning to almost break down stereotype and prejudice, but like actually facilitating spaces to really get to know people versus just the stereotypes that we hear about.